for another Nebraska Prep Zone report. We are sponsored today by MD West One, Nebraska's most advanced sports medicine, orthopedics, neurosurgery, and spine care, covering greater Omaha for over 70 years. I'm your host, Jake Anderson, and joining me two times in 10 days, I feel honored to be joined by Mike Patterson, our girls basketball expert extraordinaire. I'd like to say you should feel honored, Jake, but let's just go ahead. It's nice to see you, too. <laughs> well, we'll be previewing girls' basketball today. Last week, we previewed boys' basketball, um, and so we want to get the fans prepped for the girls' basketball season. Um, let's get right into it with your top 10, and you have the number one team in the state, Lincoln Pius the 10th, and they've got a couple great players there. Right. That's kind of a no-brainer, Jake. Uh, Pius won last year. They're just very dominating at state. Um, they've got most of that team back. The only one who's not back, uh, I believe, key players, Lauren Taubenheim, one of their really good forwards. But uh, Alexis Markowski, their very fine center, she'll be going to Nebraska. She's back. And, uh, you know, almost as important, I think, is uh, Jillian Ashoff, uh, their point guard. Um, I think she led the state in assists last year, and many, many of them were looping those passes into Markowski down low. So uh, with both those players back, and they've got two other starters back too, I think the Thunderbolts, now that they can uh, start up practice and start playing games, um, I think the Thunderbolts are the logical preseason number one. And the biggest question for them is how are teams going to defend Markowski what adjustments have people made? And then what does Pius do off of that? Right. Well, teams have been trying just about everything. You know, uh, at State last year, they were trying to double team her and triple team her. And uh, she still was getting her points. So, um, you know, credit to uh, Ryan Pasota as the Pius coach as far as, and, and not just all about Alexis, but they have other scoring options too. So it's not just bring the ball down and, and get the ball to her. So. Um, I, I think Pius has kind of countered a lot of the defensive moves that other teams have, have used against them. So um, it'll be interesting to see exactly how those, uh, how those battles will go this season. And your number two team has another talented player, Fremont, the Tigers, led by an Iowa commit, Taylor McCabe. She can shoot the lights out, set a Class A record last year with 107 three-pointers. Right. Very fine Obviously, guard, like you said, she's going to be a Hawkeye someday. Uh, she's back. Um, she can hit from the outside, but she can also drive and create a lot of things. And the Tigers have a few other returning starters, too. So um, it was kind of funny. The, this morning, my wife said, hey, Fremont's ranked number two. She's a Fremont high grad. So she was happy about that. So, but, uh, you know, McCabe is, is where it all starts with uh, Fremont. And of course, they're their uh, legendary coach, Kelly Flynn, he um, might be the all-time win leader in the state someday. We'll see how that goes. But uh, all the great success he had at South Sioux City, and now he's brought a lot of that success. Not a title yet, but uh, we'll see what happens this season. But uh, the Tigers, uh, I think, a logical number two pick to possibly push the uh, highest Thunderbolts this year. And your number three team, another Lincoln school, able to start up practicing. Lincoln Southwest, led by Kate Dillsaver. She does more than score. She had 63 steals last year. Yeah, she's one of those all-around really solid players and one of those uh, players that opposing coaches really kind of fear and try to uh, – try to guard against because like you said she can she can hurt you in many ways but um she's probably the key reason why the silver hawks are are ranked number three going into the preseason uh they were at state last year they have great tradition down there and um i think with dill saver leading the way i think uh the silver hawks possibly another state tournament team this year and um you know we'll see how it goes for them and your another, number four team is another returning state tournament team, but with some new faces, 
to me, the key storyline for Millard South, the Patriots, those Fab Five freshmen, as they were called last year, are now sophomores. Maya Babbitt, Miranda Kelly, Juliana Jones, Cora Olson, and Chloe Lemon. What can we expect from the Patriots this year? Our good friends at Millard South, Jake. I mean, they've been in the mix for the last uh, several years. They come very close to a state title. They've fallen just short. Um, you know, they're going to have to move on without uh, Jamie Horan and, and uh, uh, you know, who they've had in the past. And it's like uh, the young players are going to be stepping up. Um, Cora Olson, very solid, one of the Fab Five, as you mentioned. Um, I think the Patriots are going to be good. I just don't know if they're going to be quite as good as they have been because of those graduation losses. But uh, we'll see what's up for Miller South this year. Very, very uh, talented young team. And like you said, maybe even still a year away. Who knows with all those freshmen that they had last year. So we'll see. Definitely. And speaking of freshmen, your number five team, led by Ania Jones, the Eagles of Omaha Central newcomers to the rankings they didn't finish last year ranked what can we expect from Omaha Central this year well this is where we kind of get into a little uncharted territory Jake because uh, a lot of this is kind of what we're hearing uh, a lot of what uh, coaches are talking about but I, I think the Eagles they're 9 and 15 last year but I expect them to be uh, much improved this year like you said uh, um, Ania Jones that's, uh, that's their young player, freshman, that we've heard a lot about. Ania Webb is uh, very strong, 15.5 points last season she averaged. So, um, like I said, the, you know, the Eagles won a state title not too long ago. They haven't been back to state in a little while, but, uh, you know, the boys' teams have, have been great. So, uh, I, I expect some pretty good things from Central. Definitely a team to watch this year. And then at six and seven, we have a couple more Lincoln schools adding to the intrigue of what will Lincoln do just starting up practice and then games a few weeks away. You have Lincoln High and Lincoln East. What are we right. looking for from them? Right. Again, a little bit of speculation here. It's kind of interesting, Jake. For once, uh, it's probably the first time that I can remember that there have been so many Lincoln schools in the top 10 and not so many metro conference schools so uh, Lincoln High they've got a lot of height I, I think the links could be tough they were 17 and 8 last year so they were pretty good then I think they're going to be a little better this year and uh, the Spartans 25 and 3 last year uh, Dennis Pritchard does a really nice job there they kind of reload I know uh, some other um, information I saw maybe he had the Spartans ranked even higher than I did but they lost about six or seven seniors, so I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to start them out at number seven, and, and we'll see. But uh, they're another one of those programs, kind of like Lincoln Southwest and, you know, the other really strong Lincoln school traditionally uh, that seems to be there every year at state tournament time. So we'll see if the Spartans can get back there this year. You just like handing out that bulletin board material, PAT. Sure. I, I call them as I see them, Jake. <laughs> That's the way it's always been. <laughs> Number eight is one Metro Conference team, as we mentioned, Omaha Burke. Um, and they have a Xavier commit. Right. Anaya Harris, outstanding player for the Bulldogs. Um, you know, Burke's another team that hasn't really had great success as far as getting to the state tournament in recent years. They were 10 and 15 last year. And, uh, you know, kind of like Central, I expect them to take a, a big step forward this year. So kind of a speculation on the Bulldogs a little bit, but, uh, you know, they've got a really good player leading the way there. So um, Burke, I, I think, is a, a good, a good uh, spot to start for them as number eight. And then number nine, we have North Platte. They reached the state tournament last year for the first time since 2009. Right. A very good player named Hannah Borg from uh, North Platte. 19 and five last year. Fly under the radar a little bit out there uh, so far west away from the eastern schools. Um, I expect them to have another strong season. They had a really good uh, volleyball team this year, um, made it to state, and you know, 
I think um, that shows the athletics that they've got out there at North Platte right now. So to see them get back to the state tournament, I don't think it'd be a big surprise this year. And then closing out your overall top 10, we have the best in class B Norris and they're led by Brianna Stye. Right. She averaged 13 and a half last year. Uh, Norris has pretty much everybody back from last season. Jake, they had a, Really good season. They uh, made it to state. They were defeated in overtime in the first round by eventual state champion Crete. Uh, Mark Hagerman is the head coach. Does a really nice job. Uh, Again, they had a very good volleyball team. A lot of those athletes are uh, back playing basketball. And, uh, I, you know, I started Norris at number 10 in the top 10, but I think that's one of those teams that's going to be kind of interesting to see if they can maybe – move up a little higher as the season goes along. But I think the Titans are, uh, are the kind of, at least right now, strong choice in Class B, ranked number one in Class B, number 10 in our overall top 10. And then another top 10 team that I wanted to talk about today, because I think the average fan might be a little bit surprised to see them this low, Omaha West Side. What can we expect from the Warriors this year? They've been a bit of a perennial title contender, are they, you know, kind of taking a step back, reloading? Uh, more bulletin board fodder, Jake. If I have <laughs> Westside ranked down there at number 10, I, Steve Clark is our head coach. He does a great job. And I think what's going to help them this year, they got hit hard by graduation. Um, they, they've had some really good teams the past few years, but, you know, eventually those players are going to move along. Um, I mean, Steve is one of the best def- defensive coaches out there. So even if they don't quite have the uh, – offensive firepower that they've had in in past years. I I think uh, they're going to be good enough defensively to stay in a lot of games. So, yes, there are other teams ranked uh, ahead of the Warriors, but, uh, hey, look at the football season they had. So maybe they can ride a little bit of that positive mojo into the uh, basketball season. (laughs) And a couple other players we'd be remiss if we didn't mention – one, I can't believe it took us this long to mention, a Nebraska commit, Allison Wiedner of Humphrey St. Francis. Right. Pretty good player for a Class D, too. I mean, if she's a Nebraska recruit and she's uh, – they'll, they'll find – I don't care where you're at in the state. Colleges are going to find you if you're a player. And Allison's obviously one. She just got done with volleyball season, helped lead the team to state there. Uh, Humphrey St. Francis. She averaged 25 points last season, which I think was second in the state. So she's back this year, and um, I'm sure she's motivated by what happened at state last year. Fell a little bit short. So Allison returning all stater. Um, expect a, a really positive and, and strong season from her. And Elkhorn North is a school we should mention. Their first basketball season. They're led by a standout freshman, Britt Prince. Right. She's been offered already by Nebraska and Creighton, so that probably tells you something right there. I've never seen her play, but I've heard a lot about her. Her mother is the head coach. Uh, Elkhorn North, obviously a new program, so no seniors. Um, We'll see how, uh, how Prince does leading the way, but I think that'll be a fun team to watch this year and uh, she should be a fun player to watch. So um, we'll see how the Wolves do. And here's your favorite part. Some under the radar teams. Who are the ones we haven't mentioned who could compete for the title in class day? Oh man, that's a tough one this year, Jake, because uh, I think the teams that we have ranked in that top 10, they're, they're the logical ones. So I think maybe one that I, I maybe could have snuck in there, and I, I didn't. I, I'm sure they'll let me know about this, a Papio South. But the Titans, I, I think, will have a, a good team this year. Papio, they, uh, they're another team that suffered some serious graduation losses. But Josh Siski at Papio is a really good coach. Um, Andy Gerlitz at uh, Papio South is, is a really good coach. Um, I think Bellevue West, the Thunderbirds, might make some noise. Uh, Taryn Wharton, one of their best players. I believe she's going to Northern Iowa. So um, another team to watch. I, I think that's, uh, that's the ones right now, Jake. But um, 
we'll see how it goes. Millard North, Millard West, sometimes some of those usual suspects, we'll see. Millard North has a new coach this year. They moved on from the Dave Deal era. Mark Kruger is still the coach at Millard West. And, um, you know, both those schools have really strong girls basketball traditions. So I, I, I'll throw them into the mix. That's kind of a, we'll have to wait and see how they do. And to avoid you getting heat for snubbing people, we'll mention the, the best of the rest in Class B. Um, you have your two through five, York, Elkhorn, Elkhorn North, as we talked about, and Omaha Scott. Um, which of those teams do you think can compete best with the Titans? Uh, I think just kind of on paper going into the season, it might be York. We got them ranked number two, but I, I think uh, Elkhorn's going to be pretty solid this year. We mentioned Elkhorn North, kind of the uh, wild card is the new program this year, but I think uh, Omaha Scott's going to be an interesting one, Jake. They had, uh, they were six and 19 last year. So really, uh, unscut like for them. Uh, they had some injuries and had a tough season. But uh, Kip Colony, the longtime coach at Millard West, is, is Scott's coach now. And um, they've got uh, Lindsey Krause, 6'4". We all know about her from volleyball season, Nebraska recruit. She's going to play basketball this year. I think she played freshman, sophomore. She didn't play last year. She'll play this year. So anytime you got a 6'4 presence in the post, that's a positive thing. So I think the Skyhawks might uh, take a big step forward this year from where they were last year. Well, I think we're all set for girls basketball season. We'll look forward to your insight throughout the rest of the year. And until next time, thanks for listening. As the official team doctors for high school and college teams across greater Omaha, MD West One Sports Med doctors can get you back into the game stronger than ever. Meet the Sports Med team at mdwestone.com or call 402-390-4111.